What's the best way to clean an IBC tote? Now this depends on a number of factors. The first is the number that you're going to be cleaning per week, the nature of the residues being cleaned and the likely nature of the runoff from that cleaning process, and then how critical it is to get them really, really clean. So let's go through the main methods of cleaning IBCs and then look at the pros and cons for each of them. First, we have manual cleaning. You can either fill the IBC up with water or use a pressure washer and scrub it by hand. Now this is probably the most expensive when you factor in all of the costs there. It's labor intensive and it's actually the least reliable. It has the big advantage of the fact that there's no specialist equipment needed in particular. I mean, you might use a pressure washer for it, but that's probably something you're gonna have already. In terms of capex costs, it's very, very cheap. You've got everything you need already, not less. So what's this good for? When's it an appropriate type of cleaning? Well, if you're doing few IBCs, it can be perfectly fine to do it this way. Maybe less than 10 a week after that, it becomes a bit more of a problem. If the runoff is easy to handle and you can dispose of it easily enough on site, then it's perfectly fine to do it by hand. And if the residues that need to be washed are relatively easy to clean, because it isn't a particularly effective way of cleaning, but if they're fairly easy to rinse out, if it's a fairly nice residue, then it can be a perfectly effective way to do it. And also if it's non-critical, if it's really critical that you get these IBCs hygienically clean, then it's probably best not to do it by hand because it's the most unreliable. So what about IBC cleaning stations? Now these are fully automatic IBC cleaning station. These are kind of at the other end of the spectrum compared to manual cleaning. These units have single or multiple bays for the automatic cleaning of IBCs and will rapidly clean even the most toughest residue. They also handle the runoff and the residue and drain that away. So they're safe, they're effective, they're efficient but they come with a fairly hefty price tag to take up a fair bit of space in the factory. So unless there are many IBCs to be cleaned regularly, then it may not be worth the investment. The type of situation where they might be good if you're cleaning, say, over 50 IBCs a week, it might be worth the investment. If you've got difficult to handle runoff and you need a system that will take that runoff and drain it away somewhere safe so it can be disposed of safely, they're good for that. If you've got very tough residues, doing it by hand is just not going to really work so they can handle tough residues because they have advanced cleaning heads in them. If it's a critical cleaning application, you need to get it absolutely spotless, then they're very good for those situations. What about IBC cleaning systems? Now this is kind of like a halfway house between the fully automated cleaning stations and manual cleaning. So it's kind of halfway between these. It consists of a pump, hosing, a rotary cleaning head that can be inserted into the IBC on a special lance that will normally fit to the lid of the IBC. So they're a kind of semi-automatic cleaning system. And these systems are available for a pretty modest amount of money, far, far cheaper than the cleaning stations and they are a very, very safe and effective way and efficient way of cleaning IBCs. They're not quite as neat as the IBC cleaning stations. You still need to deal with the runoff and work out how to deal with that. But when we're dealing with IBC cleaning on a regular basis, they're a good solution. So what situations are these good for? We think they're good for about sort of between five and 50 IBCs a week. They're good at handling tough residues because you've got advanced cleaning heads in these systems. They're good for critical cleaning because they're automatic systems or so systematically clean IBCs. And they're good for relatively easy to handle runoff. If you've got lots of nasty runoffs, then you're going to need probably a different type of system for this. So if you've got toxic runoffs, for example, that need to be disposed of safely, they're probably not suitable for that situation. So what about contract cleaning? Now this will be more expensive than doing it in-house, but it's highly scalable and is probably the best option if the residues are particularly tough or harmful and toxic. The specialist cleaning companies may well be best placed to deal with these types of cleaning requirements or if there's a huge variation week to week in the amount of cleaning required. So they're probably good for situations where you've got 50 plus IBCs cleaning per week. You've got very tough residues. There's critical cleaning there, so you absolutely have to get it spotless. And in particular, when there's really difficult to handle runoff, it's probably best to get a specialist company in to deal with that rather than dealing with it in-house.